angry mum and dad investors who lost their life savings after the collapse of the Raylan Group. Recently, we reported how the property developer went into administration owing half a billion dollars. We've obtained vision of a creditors meeting where the boss faced the music. The second creditors meeting for the collapsed Raylan Group descending into chaos. Meeting. I, I feel anger, I feel cheated. This vision of yesterday's meeting was leaked to a current affair by angry investors, furious that company director William O'Dwyer had the gall to propose a controversial rescue plan for his company after all of their money had been lost. I don't want to close the talk for long, but wanted to briefly address you. These are very serious breaches of the Corporations Act. Give yourself and your families an opportunity. The spectacular collapse of Raylan Group under William O'Dwyer left more than a thousand investors in the lurch. Many of them Chinese-speaking Australians, mum and dad investors, hoping to build a nest egg for their families. In total, we are putting for. $561,000. $500 million, it's an astronomical amount of money. Sorry, I can't make any comment. Raylan's Mandarin-speaking sales team encouraged buyers to sign over their deposits, releasing them from the trust account for a proposed 15% return on investment. An incredible risk. And when the company went belly up, so did their investments. Did you realise that you could potentially lose all that money? Um, um, we didn't realise because they have been 15 years doing the same thing. Hundreds of investors queued yesterday for the second creditors meeting to hear O'Dwyer. It was a last ditch plea to try and get investors to vote to give him a second chance rather than place the company into liquidation. You have nothing to lose by voting yes to the We definitely are not going to jump to the same trap again. Isabel and her family have lost $200,000 in Raylan's Ruby development. There are a lot of older people, elder people, they don't speak English. They don't understand anything. Like so many have told us, she claims the risks were not properly explained by the salesman. I think William is very professional as a scammer. Give yourself and your families an opportunity. I just wanted to chat to you about the... When a current affair has approached O'Dwyer in recent times, he's refused to shine any light on how his company managed to rack up $564 million worth of debt. Some of your investors say that uh, the day before your company collapsed that you had, you had people calling them, asking them to put in more money into the investment. Have you got anything to say about that? Uh, I can't make any comment, sorry. How do you feel about the collapse of the company? I mean, it's been something you've been running for a very long yes, time. Yes, I feel awful. How do you feel for the investors? Uh, I feel awful for the stress it's caused everyone. For the last four months, Administrator Grant Thornton has pored over Raylan's finances, trying to figure out if O'Dwyer had indulged in illegal practices. In its investigations, the administrator made two alarming discoveries. The first was that Raylan was operating insolvent since 2014. And the second was they were running two sets of books. One set to show the banks and another set to reveal what was actually going on with the company's finances. Now that false set of books was used to induce lenders, and in particular Wingate and Westpac, uh, to lend very, very large sums of money that allowed him to perpetuate the business and perpetuate the Ponzi-style scheme that he had going with the investors. Matthew Bransgrove is from Bransgrove Lawyers, the Sydney law firm taking up the fight on behalf of more than 450 of Raylan Group's buyers. The rules surrounding the raising of money are there to protect investors from just this sort of disaster and this sort of debacle. So, when you couple that with the fact that fraud was used in order to keep the whole Ponzi scheme rolling along, then you would have to expect that 
Mr. Ardwai is going to be going to jail. Well, I wish they can go to the jail because they, they break the law. It's Australia, it's not in China. They cannot do something like that and think they can just go away. What a mess. And we'll learn the result of the creditors' vote next Tuesday. Rest assured, we're going to stay on the case.